This message comes to you from Withenshaw Community Church, Manchester. We hope that you are inspired and challenged by God's Word. Who do you say that I am? When I think of myself, I know exactly what you see. Every flaw, every blemish, the scars of my hurts and my mistakes, the things I've done to myself, the things that have been said and done to me, that's who I am. You see a mother, a daughter, sister and aunt. You see the scarce shadow of a woman's potential irreversibly wrapped in failure. But then I hear it. That still, small voice. Who told you that? Who told you that you are defined by your mistakes? Who told you that you are ugly? broken? Who told you that you are only measured by what you give others? Who told you that brokenness and frailty are what you carry? Haven't you heard? You are not what everyone says you are. You are who God says you are and you are His. He says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He says you are a perfect design, made for a purpose, made for a destiny, and you are never alone. He says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He goes before you. He goes behind you. He says you are bold. He says you are brilliant. He says you are brave. He says greater is he that is in you. hand painted by the master himself you are who god says you are come on yes you are who god says you are and i want to encourage you to stop listening to that devil who keeps trying to bring you down just put your focus on who god sees you as i want to encourage you to do that Father, we just want to thank you. You're an amazing God, an amazing father, an amazing dad. We just want to honor you this morning. We want to dedicate this service to you. just want to pray, Father God, that you help every single person here who's hurt, who's broken, to really realize who they are in you. I want to pray, Father, that they stop looking at people say they are, but they start looking at who you say they are in Jesus name amen and amen now last week I shared on our vision and I shared our mission statement I want to I want to repeat that again a little bit and then we want to we want to talk about leadership I'll speak a little bit on leadership and I want to announce the leaders and we want to as a church we want to pray over our leaders amen can we do that so I'll start off with uh, the vision uh, that God has for us for upcoming years, and our vision is really to work together, we want to work together to make Jesus known in all nations. That's uh, something that God laid on my heart. You know what? Every, for the last quite a few years now, we've been doing All Nations Day, and every year we seem to have over 20 different nations. This year, well, last year, we had 26 nations represented in our church. Do you think that's a coincidence? I don't believe in coincidences. I believe God is equipping us. We want to equip us to raise leaders where we can send to all nations. Amen. You, you want to be a, a church planting church where we planting churches all across the world. We don't want to limit ourselves. We want to be sending people out. And that's, I believe that's why we have so many nations presented in our church, because we want to be known for making Jesus famous in all nations. Can I get a good amen in that? You see, Great Commission, the Great Commission says, 
I've been given all authority in heaven. That's what Jesus said. I've been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go. He didn't say stay. He said go and make disciples. You know what? That's not just the leader's role. That's your role too. We need to be disciple makers. You need to be making disciples. And we need to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And we need to teach the disciples. You see, they need to learn also to make disciples. You see, we need to become hero makers. We need to make heroes. Can I get a good amen? And our mission statement is to be a church that provides a place of refuge and restoration for all. And that's what we want to do. We want to be a place where we provide a place of refuge and restoration. Now, how can we do that? I believe we can only do that through prayer. Because God is the one who restores someone. Amen? So what we want to do, God, God's laid it on my heart. We want to be, uh, in the next five years, we want to establish a 24-7 prayer ministry in our church. That's what God's laid it on my heart. That's what we want to do. So within the next five years, a 24-7 prayer ministry that is going to uh, run in our church, 24-7, praying for uh, everything. And um, uh, there's, there's a lot going on with our prayer ministry. We want to introduce a lot of different changes. And I want to I wanna encourage you. I want to encourage you. We're going to have some new series coming just next month, a series on prayer and fasting and the importance of it. And we want to, as a church... We, we want to go into a time of prayer and fasting for 21 days before Easter, where we, on Good Friday, we're planning to have baptism, and I believe God for great things. And we want to pray into that. So I want to encourage you to get involved, get connected. But also, we want to be a place where all these members, all, the, all you, are inspired to connect, to connect, to grow. And to use your God-given potential to make Jesus known in your sphere of influence. Now, how do we, how do we connect? You see, Sundays is very important. And I want to encourage you to come on Sundays. Because when you come on Sunday, you're telling Jesus, you're telling God, you know what? The first day of the week, I'm honoring it to you. You're giving the first day of your week to God. And we should be doing that. The first of everything, we need to honor it back to God. But secondly, I want you to realize only coming on Sunday is not going to help you. Because you know what happens? You're sitting there. All you're seeing is someone's back of head and you're seeing what's happening on the stage. You're not really getting to connect with one another. And you know what? God's design is not for you to be alone. God designed you to be in a community, to be connected, to grow, to develop. So we started our life groups again this week. How many enjoyed the life groups? Honestly, if you're not part of a life group, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to get connected because that's where lifelong relationships happen. I want to encourage you to get connected because what happens when you join a life group, something significant happens. Something significant happens. Life groups is a place where you connect you connect with others. You share life together. You share life together. Our purpose for life group is to bring people together. Because when people come together, something significant happens. We want to we want it to be a place to protect. You see, when you build a relationship with someone, you open up a little bit more. You see, because now you can, you can share because it's a safe place. It's a safe environment. You're connected with the people. And when you open up and share, you, you, you know, something happens. Because, you know, when you're in a storm, your perspective is all you're seeing is that storm. But when you're in a place where you're with others, they can encourage you through that storm. They can come alongside you, keep you, keep, keep you in prayer, and help you through that storm. I want to encourage you, please, please, get connected. To life together, our problems become smaller. God uses others to bring support and encouragement to our lives. It's also a place to grow. How many know Holy Spirit is involved in everyone? Honestly, you, you, can, you can learn even from a little child. Never, never uh, underestimate what the Holy Spirit can do. 
Uh, you know, in a life group, we don't want it to be like another church service. So we encourage you to uh, get involved because God can speak through it to you. So it's very simple. We're going through the uh, Gospel of John, and everyone can read the Gospels, and, and the Holy Spirit will speak to you about the Scripture. I want to encourage you to share that with one another because something significant happens when you share. What, what happens is God's revealed a different perspective to you. So as you share, others can be blessed by what God has revealed to you. Secondly, also you grow as a result of it because now you realize that God's speaking to you too. Amen. Also, I want to I encourage you, you know, to be a place of refuge and restoration. What we want to do is prayer is number one, but we want to also introduce a couple of different programs. Can we just go back again? Um, I want to encourage you, freedom in Christ. Freedom in Christ is so powerful, and we will be introducing that very shortly. I want, I want everyone to get uh, connected. Take that course. I'm telling you, at the end of it, you will be free. In Jesus' name, you, you will be a different person. Freedom in Christ. But also all our leaders will go through a free to lead. We need to be able to lead you in freedom in Jesus' name. Can I get a good amen? There's also a lot of people who are financially uh, struggling. We want to we wanna partner up with Christians Against Poverty, help you to be set free and be financially free. So that's something else coming. But also we want to get involved in homeless ministry. Those who are interested in homeless ministry, I want to encourage you to give your names to my wife. On the 1st of February, that's a Friday, we want to take a group over to Barnabas in, home, in the city center uh, where you can uh, take part. And it gives you a place where you can see whether that's something you enjoy doing. And if it is, and if you want to be part of the team, then we can register you. We need to do some CRB checks, and, and then we can build a team where we can send on a regular basis to Barnabas. So I want to encourage you to get connected. If that's you and you're interested, give your names to my beautiful wife right in the front, and uh, she can uh, uh, speak to you about the rest of the uh, stuff. Um, there's a lot more going on, but I'm not going to uh, talk about them. Membership class is coming up soon. I'm still finalizing quite a few things. Uh, it will be on the 3rd of March uh, on a Sunday, uh, but I will give you more details as we uh, approach that time. But please, please get connected, get connected, get connected. Now today, I want to talk about leadership and the importance of it. How many know leadership is really important? You see what it says in the Proverbs, Proverbs 11 verse 14, Proverbs 11 14 says, a city without wise leaders will end up in what? In what? But a city with many wise leaders will be kept what? Will be kept? Yes, a city without wise leaders will end up in ruin. But a city with many wise leaders will be kept safe. And that same principle applies to church. You see, that same principle applies to church. Because when you have many wise leaders, the church can be a safe place. Can I get a good amen? And, and, and that's an important place, you see. If you want to be a place of refuge, we need many wise leaders. Don't we? We need many wise leaders. And this morning we want to look at uh, uh, leadership, like I said. In, I want to look at it in a practical way. And there's a lot of examples we can look at. Uh, but I feel like David is the example I want to, us to look at this morning. King David. How many know David was a great man? He was, right? And it's really easy to answer why. Because he had a, a heart for God. He had a heart for God. But he was also a good leader. But why was he a good leader? Um, that's a little bit more complicated, but I'm going to look into that. You see, when David was young, um, he was looking after the flocks. Prophet Samuel, I'm not going to go too much into it, but Prophet Samuel received a message from God. God said, you know what? You need to go to the house of Jesse 
And what I want you to do is go to the house of Jesse and anoint one of the sons to become the next king of Israel. Now Saul was still the king. So Samuel goes in 1, 1 Samuel chapter 16 and he goes there and uh, he goes and um, Jesse brings his sons. He puts them in a row and uh, here we have uh, prophet uh, Samuel come in and uh, he, he asked them to come. And, and as he's praying for the first son, you see what happened is prophet Samuel looks at him and he sees the great leader in him. He's like, yeah, it must be him. It must be him. So as he comes up, uh, Prophet Samuel comes and puts his hand and is about to pray. But God says, no, that's not him. That's not him. So he's like, do you have any, another son? So the second son comes. Again, Prophet Samuel looks at him and is like, yeah, it must be him, right? And uh, God says, no, that's not him. And that continues. All seven sons that uh, Jesse thought it was the, 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 the leader type material come and the God says no that's not that's not that's not it and then Jesse turns around I've got another son which is on the field and they they get David David comes I'm sure prophet Samuel must have been like are you sure God <laughs> looking at David are you sure he's the leadership material but anyway Samuel anoints him and commissions him and for quite a few years, nothing really happens. Nothing really happens. And we can, we can see how God was with David, though. God was with David because David was very talented. He was extremely talented. He was talented in playing music. He was a great musician. He played the harp. He was a great shepherd because he looked at the flock really well. He was great at the, at the slingshot because he really protected the, uh, the flock really well. He was really creative as well because he was a creative songwriter. He wrote loads of songs. He was very courageous and brave. As a young boy, he wasn't scared. He, he literally attacked a lion. He attacked a bear. He killed uh, uh, the Goliath. <laughs> he was humble, though. You never find him bragging about things. He was a humble, and he did, never boasted about anything. But he also had a great vision. He was a great visionary. David was a man with many talents. He was a man with many talents, and he could have accomplished a whole lot of things on his own. But how many know we can accomplish a lot on our own, but we can accomplish or influence or impact a nation without a team behind you? On your own, you can do a lot of things. But to be able to impact a whole nation, you need a great team behind you. And what I love about David, what made him a great leader, he had a desire to love and serve God. David had a desire to serve and love God. You see, as a leader, you need to be able to love God with all your heart. With all your heart. But also as a leader, you need to be able to serve God with all your might. You see, David had the ability to also surround himself with strong people and team up with them to achieve greatness. And that's what I want to look at this morning. And that's what I want to look at this morning. And, and as we examine David's life, we see how he accomplished a lot of the uh, things that he, we, we managed to accomplish was because of the team of people that he had around him. Who is a leader? Who is a leader? How many know if no one's following you, you're not a leader? A leader is someone who leads people. You're not managing people, you're leading people. And it's been said there are three kind of people. There are three kind of people. One, those who make things happen, those are leaders, make things happen. Uh, those who watch things happen, then you've got people that watch things happen. And then you've got those who wonder what's happening. They're questioning what's happening, <laughs> but they're not willing to do anything about it. Leaders are made of those who are um, who know what's happening, and they're not content to sit back. They want to take action, uh, and, and they don't want to be on the sideline. Leadership is the ability to mobilize others to accomplish a common goal. That's what a leader is. And when David was on the run, how do you know? David was on the run. Saul, you see, David grew in favor with God and with people. Now, all of a sudden, Saul was not happy. Saul was like, no, this, this is not right, you know, because... Uh, he, he, he's getting too much fame. 
So now Saul wants to kill David. Saul is hunting David, and now David is a fugitive, and he's hated, and he's haunted. But what's interesting is the fact that David didn't wait until he was a leader before he actually started building his team. When you look at the scriptures, you actually come across how uh, long before he became a king of Israel, while he was still being hunted by King Saul, he actually started building his team. And when we look at 1 Samuel 22, verses 1 to 2, it reads this. When David escaped from the town of Gath, and he went to Adlam cave, so he was in a cave, so he's hiding in a cave, his brothers and the rest of the family found out where he was, and they followed him there. A lot of other people joined him too. Some were in trouble, others were angry or in debt, and David was soon the leader of 400 men. So while he's in hiding, while he's in cave, people found out about David, and they came to David. And these are his brothers and his family who uh, didn't see the leadership potential in him. Now they're actually going to him and want to serve him. And the same thing we see with people who are in trouble, people in in debt, in in problems, they found refuge in that cave, and David used his ability to actually help them and encourage them. And what happened is David transformed those people uh, into a winning team, and he had 400 leaders right there, 400 who followed him. You see, our church, our mission is to be uh, to provide a place of refuge and restoration. We want to be that place where people come in, people who are broken, people who are written off by society, they come in and find Jesus. They get restored to the God-given potential, and we want to stir them on to discover what God has given them. You see, we want to, we want to be able to help them to, to get there. As leaders, we should never look at the finished product. We should never look at the finished product. We never should want finished product. We want to we wanna make, make disciples. We need to spend time building, building our next generation, building our next leaders. And that's a, that's a, that's a great thing. Now Rachel is out with uh, two of the young, young boys from here. And, and, and that's what we want to do. We want to we wanna take them where they can grow and develop and uh, become leaders and come back and, 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 and influence other young people. David molded those who came to him into great warriors and leaders. What a great example of leadership. You see, Jesus has anointed his church to express his fullness in every sphere of society. This is our foundation for mobilizing people. We want to equip every disciple to grow in the lordship of Jesus and their ability to, to share the gospel. Wherever you live, wherever you work, wherever you, uh, you study or, uh, or play, or again, our mission is to be a church that provides a place of refuge, restoration for all, and be a place where all its members are inspired to connect, grow, and use your God-given potential to make Jesus known in every sphere of your influence. You see, in order to succeed, David had to develop a structure and to keep kingdom growing and strong and secure. Many wise leaders keep a place safe. Many wise leaders. John C. Maxwell said this, teamwork makes the dream work. I love that. Teamwork makes the dream work. And we want to be a place where we work as a team. We want to work together. We want to work together. So what I wanted to do this morning, I want to, I want to introduce to you the team, because it's important for you to know who are in the leadership. And then as, as a church, we want to pray for our leaders. Can we do that? Excellent. So I'll start, I'll start with the, the um, um, I'll go through the list, and, um, and then uh, we, I'll just explain a little bit. So Pastor Mike and Mary, of course, uh, they are our overseers, and they will still be involved as overseers in our church. Then you have myself and my wife, uh, who will be the lead pastors here. And then we will have three assistant pastors. You can have Pastor Terrence and uh, Sister Portia. You want to come in front? 
So, of course, Pastor Terence is involved in our uh, connecting man, and he'll be also um, in, 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 in the care team. And Sister Portia was uh, the woman of valor. They had a great meeting yesterday. They, they enjoyed themselves, I heard. Um, and then we have Pastor Fabian and Sister Jaya as well as the um, assistant pastors. Now, they're at work. Unfortunately, they can't be here with us today. Uh, they're working. But, uh, yeah, so they are our assistant pastors. Uh, also, Pastor Paul and Sister Elizabeth, you want to come up? Uh, please come in the front. Now, Pastor Paul and Sister Elizabeth will be helping with the training and development and evangelism. So I'll be working alongside them, developing those areas. And then, Brother Akin, you want to come up front? Um, Brother Akin is our life group coach. Uh, so he'll be overseeing all the life group leaders. Um, is, and, and honestly, it's so important for you. Can I, can I explain something? So if you want something in church, so basically you want to get baptized, your first point of contact is your life group leader. You want, to, you want to speak to your life group leader, and your life group leader then can get the stuff um, sorted. So he, they, they know that they need to speak to who, and, and, and we can organize things. So I want to encourage you uh, to be part of a life group again. Uh, then can I have Emma? You want to come over? Emma is our children ministry, and uh, she's doing an amazing job. So we want to we honor you, Emma. Uh, Rachel, as I explained, she's away. She's our uh, youth minister, so we want to pray for her as well when she's... Uh, Belinda, you want to come? Um, Belinda is our worship leader. She's doing a great job, and uh, she's our worship leader. Then we have Sister Shyla. Where are you, Sister Shyla? Yeah, you want to come up front? Uh, she, Sister Shyla is our hospitality team uh, coordinator, so she is the head of uh, hospitality team. Brother Joseph, you want to come now? Uh, so Brother Joseph is our multimedia leader. Sister Stephanie, <laughs> come on. <laughs> and uh, Sister Stephanie is our prayer um, in our prayer ministry, she's heading the prayer ministry. Like I said, there's a lot going to be happening. Um, just, just get connected because prayer is so powerful. And then Sister Diane, where are you? You want to come up front? Uh, Sister Diane will be training to become our financial coach. Um, and, and, and we want to help you in every way. So uh, Sister Diane will be our financial coach. Um, Angela, where are you? Uh, Angela is our treasurer. And um, also, I want to I share our trustees. So our trustees uh, is Pastor Mike, still a trustee. Uh, myself now, I'm coming on as a trustee. And Emma. Uh, uh, so we have three trustees, and, and that's our trustees in the church. So... God has laid it on my heart within the next five years. The, the, the three, three main things that I really want to, uh, as a church, we want to establish. Uh, one, I already shared, we want to establish a 24-7 prayer ministry in our church. So within the next, next five years, we want to be able to fully functioning uh, a 24-7 uh, prayer ministry. But we also want to reach one million uh, people with the gospel. How many know, in within shows, only 156,000, uh, the population, 156. So that means we need to go outside within show. So we need to think bigger than within show. Uh, so with that, we need a great team. We need, and also, you want to ra raise enough leaders uh, to plant at least two churches within the next five years. At least. We're planning to even do more, but at least two churches. And I'm not just talking about uh, sending a couple out. We want to we send a, a couple with the team and with some congregation with it uh, to support them, to help them to build the church. But we can't achieve that without a good structure, leadership, and support. You see, grow a leader, and you grow a church. Grow a leader, you grow a church. So strong leadership is so essential to the growth. So can I ask you to stand? And what we want to do, we want to we pray for our pastors and leaders here. And we want to come into agreement. And we want to ask God to equip them, to help them, and, and, and 
Yeah. So if you want to raise your hands towards them and we just want to pray for them. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We want to honor you this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, the author and finisher of our faith. Father, I want to pray that the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge shall rest upon our pastors and all the leadership here in Whittenshaw Community Church, Father. We want to thank you. We want to honor you. We want to praise you, Father. For our pastors, Lord, I want to pray that the Spirit of your spirit rest upon them father that you will make them quick in understanding because you lord have anointed them you qualified them to preach the gospel to the meek to the poor to the wealthy and to the afflicted father we want to thank you for them we want to honor you for them father we just want to thank you for all our leaders father this morning for all our leaders we that they shall be called the priest of the lord People will speak to them as the ministers of God. They, they shall eat the wealth of all nations. I pray and believe that no weapon that is formed against them shall ever prosper. Father, that any tongue that rises against them in judgment shall be shown to be wrong. Father, I pray that you will prosper them abundantly, Lord that you uh, prosper them physically, spiritually, and financially, Father. Father, I want to pray and believe that each and every day, believe that each and every day, redeemed of utterance is given to our leaders, Father. That they will open their mouths boldly and courageously, Father. That they share and witness the gospel to the people, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the fresh anointing and the strength and the covering in Jesus' name. Father, we want to pray. Father, we want to, we want to come. If you, you want to, we want to come before our, our pastors and leaders, Father. We just want to say, we will say only good things. Only good things that will edify them, that will build them up. Father, from now on, we will not allow ourselves to judge them, but we will continue to intercede for them. Father, we will speak and pray blessing upon them each day of our lives. Father, we just want to thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Yes. So that was the, I want, I want to encourage you again, please stay connected, stay connected, we are stronger together, in Jesus' name, Amen. We hope you've been inspired and challenged by this message. For more information about Withenshaw Community Church Manchester, please visit Withenshaw Community Church dot org